ice cream cake from Dairy Queen. Just email your photo to show us your mug at local3news.com. Watch for our winner each weekday morning on Local 3 News Today. Get additional savings this week when we pay your sales tax on any mermaid mattress. So the kids are back in school. It's beginning to feel like fall is just around the corner, and it is, but we do still have some weeks of that summertime heat to get through. That might be difficult for us. It's also difficult and a little bit dangerous sometimes for our pets. So a good time to bring Dr. Randy Hammond into the conversation. He, of course, is with Northgate Animal Hospital in Hickson. Good to see you this morning, Randy. Yeah, you know, great, uh, great to be here this morning. And, and, you know, these summer dangers we're talking about, uh, people really travel with their pets now too, Julie, and we run into situations. We had a client that actually during the cooler months in Tennessee, but they had actually, you know, gone south to enjoy some of that warmer weather and, and their pet got in trouble. Well, okay, so one of the things that warmer weather can bring about is heat stroke. Pets can be affected by it, as can humans. And it's a real problem, especially with the short-nosed dogs. And I tell people, you know, our pets are heat exchangers. They don't sweat like we do. So it's true, but I jokingly say if your air conditioning is struggling, your, your pet is struggling. And the short-nosed dogs are really a problem. But what a lot of people don't realize, and I, I actually have a herding breed dog, a, a Australian Blue Healer, but Golden Retrievers, Labs, any of these dogs that are, that are driven by, you know, uh, chasing balls and things along those lines, they can become so focused that they can overheat themselves, even though they're actually designed to be, you know, pretty robust in the warm weather. So I always tell people to look at the, I call it the 150 rule. If you add the temperature and the humidity together and it's 150 or more, that's probably not a good day to be doing heavy exercises with your pets. And if, if you got like a bulldog, a Boston Terrier, you know, uh, Pekingese, these dogs with shorter noses, mm -hmm. uh, flat faces, then those guys, that probably, that number is much lower. Okay, there have been uh, quite a few comments going on the last few days. There's been this video that circulated up at Supers Rock of that timber rattler going by, that big snake. Uh, hopefully yeah. nobody would be out to get close to that, but dogs, of course, are famous for chasing off after things in the woods. Do you have to be concerned, maybe not about timber rattlers, that's an obvious, but even something as benign as a bee sting, can that be a problem yeah. for a pet? You know, bee stings with pets, Julie, are just like bee stings with people. You know, it's a situation to where, you know, they can have anaphylactic reactions and it can go from, you know, from an annoying swelling to an ouch to, uh, you know, a life-threatening situation where, you know, where, you know, you can close up your airway. So absolutely, you know, bee stings, spider bites, you know, the, the copperhead's a little smaller snake. It's more innocuous. All these pets are what we call, you know, have hematoxins, the rattlesnakes and the copperheads. So it's a situation where it causes severe necrosis. And, you know, a lot of times these pets, depending on the size of the pet, it can be a fatal event. So if your pet does get bitten by a snake, you know, that's, you know, that's a call to the, you know, to one of the emergency facilities or your local veterinarian. We've had a lot of rain. We've all been grateful for that. It's drying out now for a few days, but I'm sure it will come back again. Is stagnant water, I know the mosquito concern, but is it a concern for any reason besides the mosquitoes? Yeah, there's actually a couple things we worry about. Uh, Giardia uh, is an is a intestinal parasite that affects animals and people. And then leptospirosis is also a bacterium that, that ends up affecting animals and people. So our pets are actually for dogs are actually vaccinated for leptospirosis. But, you know, with contaminated water, the lepto can trash your liver and kidneys. With the giardia, it can, uh, you know, cause severe di dehydration from the diarrhea and so forth. So both of those, I, you know, I just don't recommend, you know, in stagnant water, you know, just try to make it where your pets don't drink out of it, you know. Okay. And, uh, you yeah, know, you can pick it up anywhere, but, but that's going to be your higher risk factors. It is getting a little bit cooler. We've got some low humidity right now that we're enjoying. So I guess you can forget that that sunshine is still out there and doing its thing. Do your pets ever get sunburned? Yeah, they do. And, you know, we don't think about it, but, you know, you know we've all been on the beach on a cloudy day and ended up getting sunburned because those UV lights are going to come, you know, UV rays are going to come through the, uh, through the clouds. So, you know, tips and noses are at risk. A lot of pets are not really laying on their backs, but, you know, certainly their bellies, if they were laying on their back, could be an issue. But mm -hmm. probably the biggest offender is when pets get sheared for the summer and they lose their own God-given sunscreen, their fur, and then that, then it's a situation where it's a, a situation where we end up with a 
you know, with some really, really severe sunburns on these pets. So, you know, the fur actually is the insulator, you know, and if it's, if it's not matted and so forth, you know, you want to be careful on how closely you shear them because it can end up setting up some pets for, you know, some real bad sun reactions. As a general rule, is it a good idea or a safe idea to have Benadryl just kind of on hand to be able to give your dog, at least anyway, if you suspect an allergic reaction to something? Yeah, that, you know, that's an excellent point, Julie. That's probably a good idea for the two-legged as well as the four-legged patients, you know, to have the, you know, have the Benadryl. Because even if you are going to have to be seen by a doctor, a lot of times that can buy some time and mitigate some, you know, some of the reactions and so forth. That may not be the whole ticket to getting things squared away, but certainly having Benadryl on board, you know, can really help the pets. And, you know, we'll get calls on emergencies, and sometimes if it's not too bad, you know, we'll instruct the the you know, the, the owners, the clients to end up giving the Benadryl and then, uh, you know, and if they get an immediate response and sometimes that can save them a trip to the emergency room. But if in doubt at all, it's better to have your, you know, your veterinarian check your pet out mm -hmm. because you don't want to get past the point of no return with a severe allergic reaction. Right. And is that something safe to use for your cat as well as a dog? Yeah, cat, dogs okay. and cats, uh, you know, are good with Benadryl. So you can give both, you know, you got to have a little more fitness to give a cat a pill, but the, the <laughs> liquid Benadryl, you know, doesn't taste that great to people or pets. Sometimes that's a bit more of a struggle, but, uh, but you know, if you can give your cat a, a pill, can pill a cat, and there is a finesse to that. Just with the medications we have now, we don't have to do it as much as we used to in the past. So sometimes I jokingly say that's becoming a lost art on pilling our cats. Right. Okay. And I think last question, um, most people hopefully by now know to use a flea and tick preventer for their dogs and their cats. But if you begin, if you're doing that and yet you notice some telltale scratching, is it possible that that could be an allergy situation? So could you just try to um, play process of elimination and try that Benadryl and see if the scratching goes away? Would that tell you something? Yeah, if, if, if the Benadryl uh, helps, and sometimes if, it, if the allergies aren't that bad, then, you know, sometimes that may be, you know, all you need there, you know, there at the house and so forth. If it goes beyond that, there's some excellent uh, medications that aren't steroids uh, that really help control allergies. When you and I have hay fever and our eyes run, our nose runs, when, you know, specifically with pets more, uh, you know, they have more of, uh, you know, itchy skin and itchy ears, you know, mm -hmm. ear infections and so forth. So it manifests itself in a different way than it does with us. So they suffer from allergies just like we do. It's just their symptoms are a little different from what, what we show versus what they show. But they can really make a pet miserable. And uh, if the Benadryl is not cutting the mustard, so to speak, then uh, that's a trip to your veterinarian to have them. And we got some really excellent medications we can use now that, uh, you know, that doesn't have some of the side effects that, uh, you know, that we've had in the past. Well, thanks for the telehealth visit this morning, Randy. This was very enlightening. Well, we always enjoy, you know, uh, talking to you and, and reaching out to the, the you know, the, the pet lovers in the Chattanooga area and so forth. It's just our pleasure to spend time, uh, spend time with you guys. It's a lot well, of fun. Thank you for it. And let the summer season continue now. We know how to get through it safely before those fall leaves start to drop. Randy, good to see you. Good to see you. Take care. You can find Dr. Randy Hammond and his brother, Dr. Jim Hammond, at Northgate Animal Hospital on Hamill Road in Hickson. Their phone number 875-9033. Online, NorthgateAnimalHospital.com. I'm checking my medicine cabinet for Benadryl. We're back after this. Since 1979, we have proudly been serving the Chattanooga community. With your support, we have grown beyond our wildest dreams 